All right, so hi everybody. Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Ellen Penske, and on behalf of Packet Fusion, I want to welcome you to today's Lunch and Learn Roundtable. Our topic is MyTel's on-prem connect roadmap, how to extend the life of your system. We're going to focus on how to optimize what you have, your system, and to how to get more life and functionality out of your investment. So lots of good things to talk about. This is a roundtable, so we absolutely encourage your participation and your questions. You can simply use the Q&A panel to write your questions, and our expert panel will be happy to answer them. And speaking of our panel, let me introduce them. First, we have Matt Pingator, who is the CEO of Packet Fusion, and he's recognized in the industry as a visionary and is known for his 100% customer-first perspective. You saw him earlier fighting. He's always fighting for his customers. He's seen Packet Fusion through many transitions and has adapted and pivoted with the times by staying on top of emerging technologies and how they'll shape the future. And from the MyTail team, we're excited to have with us two gentlemen. First, we have Karthik Aromagam. He is MyTail's group vice president and lead of product marketing. Karthik is a seasoned tech executive and he has over 20 years of experience. He joined MyTel in 2020 to lead product marketing and is also involved in the development of the strategic plan and the execution of it as well. Prior to MyTel, Karthik was vice president of product management at Poly, where he was responsible for the whole portfolio strategy. And prior to that, he was head of product management for 4G data devices, and he was also director of product management for the long-term evolution network solutions product line for Motorola. And uh, we also want to introduce Kurt Kruger. Kurt is not a karaoke expert. He really is. <laughs> he is the Product Life Management Director for Mid-Market Solutions. He's the UC Product Management Team Owner for MyTel's Mid-Market, uh, My Voice Business, and My Voice Connect. He has a deep understanding of the UC market and extensive experience in product management. He spent 15 years focused on UC solutions with various roles with Avaya, HP, Shortel, and of course, Mitel. So with that, um, that is our panel for today. And I also just want to make one more mention that this is a lunch and learn. And after the session is over, we will pick at random 20 of you who will participate, 20 of you who have participated in our polling or answered questions or just overall give these panelists uh, questions that you want to know, then you will win $20 round table pizza or Grubhub certificates that we'll send to you. Yeah, so after, we absolutely after. encourage you to join in the conversation. You have to ask your questions and participate in the polls. So right, Matt, I know that's what you were going to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay, with that, Matt, I'll turn it over to you for a couple of opening comments. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Again, very open. I see about five, six, seven of you that I, I know you're going to keep me honest, keep us honest here. So uh, q and I expect it to be active. Um, I, I feel I'm as close to my customers as I can be. I want to be closer. I'm going to see Kurt with a lot of questions that I think you guys are already going to ask. We're uh, going to go easy, going to go hard. We're going to have fun. Um, Kurt owns the product the one that you guys are all on today the strategic direction where it's going what he's doing how he's going it on it um, i tell everybody on the mytel prem today which used to be the shortel uh, product now it's mytel connect that we can and will keep your product alive as long as you want it that said there will become a, there will be a time that you want to go to the cloud and we would like to take you there one of the options being the cloud with mytel very easy transition, very clean transition to get there. That's what Karthik's gonna talk about at the very end of this. So that said, Mitel has uh, you know, taken a, an approach with all their products, the Intertel that they purchased, the Mitel Blue, the Ericsson, the, My, the Shortel, and they've done a good job of not killing the product. They've done a very good job of keeping it alive um, and, and having a future for all of their products. So we commend you guys with that. and Thank you for that. Um, that said, you know, we're always fighting for budget. We're always fighting for features. I'm an advocate for all my customers to get what we want into it. Um, I just, I'm part of the advisory council, which is meeting next Wednesday. And I just got my backpack for being part of it. So thank you guys. It's very nice to you guys. I will wear it with pride. 
That said, you know, there has been some technical debt that Mitel inherited when they bought Shortel, and Mitel has been slower than we all wanted to addressing. That said, they are addressing all the things that we, most of the things that we want. And so while our roadmap, a lot of this is cleanup and some really cool cleanup, there is some good there is some good news on some added features and new phone sets and cloud stuff. So it's going to be a little combination of both of those. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kurt to uh, have an open conversation with me about where things are and where things are going. And Kurt, you're one of the last man standing. You've been there for a long time and I appreciate what you do and your dedication to this product. And uh, I'll pass it off to you. Great, thank you, Matt. Yeah, uh, 2010, it's hard to believe it's been that long, but I joined Shortel back in 2010. So a little bit yeah. of history for oh. the product. Oh, dude, I know you, you've got me beat hands down. And some of the folks on the call, I suspect, may have been your customers yeah. before I got to Shortel. Oh, yeah? yeah, for sure. All right. All right. Well, as, as Matt teed up, this is, this is not my usual just run through the roadmap slides. Uh, he'll pepper me with questions. I'm sure some of those will come through the question tab here in uh, GoToWebinar. And I look forward to this being, yeah, more interactive than it often is. So with that, uh, let's let's just dive right in. Uh, I usually start these with a, a little bit of a, a framing uh, of what are we focused on generally. And, and Matt, you did a great job uh, teeing up the very first one there on the product side. Uh, we had a more debt than we needed or wanted on the technical side with My Voice Connect. And we've spent the better part of the last, actually now two years um, on improving that foundation and most importantly, addressing some of the security gaps that had opened over time, right? As new vulnerabilities are found, we care need to be security. responsive to that. We don't care don't about, about. Who cares about security, right? Oh yeah, those oh. ransomware attacks and all that stuff in the news, uh, it doesn't matter, right? I think you guys all got our newsletter recently. I hope that you guys have signed up for it and you do get it. This whole ransomware was caused by some nefarious characters infiltrating a product called Kaseya. We actually use Kaseya to monitor about a thousand of our customer servers. We use it a little differently than the most MSPs that use it. Um, one of the reasons we weren't affected, another reason we were affected, weren't affected is we were able to shut it off and do all the work necessary um, in a very, very, very timely fashion. So there was no impact to our customers and no impact to us. It remains off, it remains in a stable state. The agent on your on your uh, server, if there is one, there's no threat because it's not communicating to anything. Um, we, will issue, we just issued something yesterday. We'll issue something here in another week or so with our plan going forward of what we're gonna do with the Kaseya. Um, and we use that for remote monitoring, remote access, backups. So there's, it, it does impact us on our offering and we wanna bring it or something like it back up to, uh, to get everybody going um, on that again. But security is very important to us, which is some of the technical debt that Kurt's been dealing with and some really good news. So keep going, Kurt. Great, thank you. Um, another piece of the strategy, and you'll hear lots more about this from Karthik, uh, is on the cloud side, right? And we picked up along the way last year, actually just before things started getting locked down, uh, our, our first piece from My Voice Connect, which is the My Team Meetings application. So video collaboration, group chat, uh, great, great tool for all of us as we had to work from home and going forward even as we continue uh, with what I'm sure will be a hybrid work environment for most of us. Uh, wonderful tool, we're still running a program. Uh, it's available at no charge still until the end of September. And that's been extended a couple times, it might happen again. But if you're not aware, talk to Matt and team about how to participate in our My Team Meetings capabilities for your My Voice Connect system. And my goal as a part of Advisor Council next week is to get it permanent that anybody under a valid support agreement gets to use the My Teams meeting, which is we're gonna get to in a little bit, their cloud-based, you know, Zoom, go to meeting competitor 
and it's just there's no integration or very minimal integration in your connect client just a url um but we're trying to get it to be free so there's more added value included the better word more added value for your support agreement so uh stay tuned on that great uh, another piece here, uh, talk about our device portfolio, right? We still have a lot of customers buying our phones and we wanted to make sure that on the My Voice Connect platform, we took full advantage of the Mitel portfolio. So starting back with our 19.1 release, we picked up the 6900 series phones. That's the flagship desktop phone set. Uh, you'll see in the roadmap, that we're planning to bring the SIP decked, our cordless multi-cell decked phone offering onto the My Voice Connect platform as well. And as those phones in the 6900 series specifically we've already seen um, are enhanced, we get the benefit. For example, antimicrobial versions were just released a few months back so that customers who are concerned about any sorts of things left on the phone handsets um, are not going to survive. So great, uh, great addition of the line there. Uh, we've continued to innovate on the desktop phone side, and I'm sure you'll see Mitel continuing down that path going forward. We'll take full advantage of that on the My Voice Connect platform as well. And then finally, we, we, we have managed to, to squeeze a, a few new things in along the way here. Uh, we'd certainly like to be doing more of that. And as we get past some of these uh, security debt issues, and I'll call out some of those specifically here in the next slide, uh, look for us to be doing exactly that, adding some feature enhancements going forward. So, so in addition to the program, oh, go Matt. Yeah. Oh, programs. You're gonna. I was gonna hit you on the 14.2. The 14.2 to connect. Why is this important? Tell me. Tell me about 14.2. I have inundated my install base. They're sick of me hearing that 14.2. Maybe they are. I hope. Hopefully, they're not. That 14.2 is EOL. Maybe talk a couple minutes about who, what, why, when, where, ramifications, etc. And I'll kind of, kind of add, add some color. Perfect. Yeah. So uh, we have formally passed the end of life on the 14.2 software stream. What that means is there will never be another update to the 14.2 software. The first thing that triggers in my mind is the potential discovery of vulnerabilities in that old software. We've tackled the biggest ones that uh, we could over the past few years, but we know there are others in that software that have been corrected in My Voice Connect. So, just for security alone, I think the move to My Voice Connect makes the most sense. That said, uh, there are a lot of other good reasons. Uh, we've got new capabilities in Connect. We certainly, of course, have all of the new Mitel features that were not present. So 6900 series phones I've already mentioned. Hadn't yet mentioned, but my contact center business, our flagship contact center application, is only possible to integrate with if you move forward to My Voice Connect. And of yeah. course, the obvious that this is the platform that we are driving forward from any of you who may still be running the 14.2 era software. And I still have about 50 to 60 customers still on 14.2, believe it or not. So letter of the law, yep. If it was true what you said, it's not till September 31st that there's no more support. You're definitely not doing any more bug fixes. You'll take the call and you'll try to remedy the problem. But if it's a bug fix, you're going to say, go upgrade to connect. So we, we absolutely have absolutely. already taken that yeah. position. But to your point, we will take those phone calls as long as there's an active support contract. Yeah. It's not that we're going to hang up the phone or not pick it up. It's that the answer if it's not a configuration change which it most likely would not be because uh, we we would fix that with our own exactly yep, yep. so the, the takeaway is like guys got 50 of you guys left you know who you are let's get something on the table for the, in the next two or three months to get you upgraded to connect and that's a great segue to 
when you decide the path forward is my voice connect, we have a program in place to simplify that financially. In fact, there's there's two parts to this, right? Oh. Pathway, speedway, upgrade oh, hardware, yes. Your yes. virtual, uh, virtual is no charge. You know, you know those damn product marketing people, they keep changing names on us. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my favorite part about it, you guys have been, you know, obviously we it takes revenue out of our pocket. That's fine. We're all fine with that. Whatever's right for the customer. The customer was, hey, I already paid for this thing. Now, if I want to go virtual, I got to pay for the virtual too. It's like, wait a minute. So you guys listened to us and did the right thing. And now it's free to go from physical to virtual, like for like. So you got to get to connect to do that. Um, so you guys have done some great stuff with that. Soft phone's now free. It's been that way for a long time when you get to connect. Um, so very happy that you guys are. You actually, if you have to stay on hardware, you got some really new hardware, really nice hardware. Um, new line, ST line. Yep. You won't go into today. But the thing that excites me the most about Connect is some of these security enha enhancements that you, you've had plenty of webinars on in the past. The first one is TLS 1.2 which is obviously better than TLS 1.0, just because it's 0 0.2 higher. It's got to be better, right? Maybe you could talk a little bit about that and what it means for our customer base. Yeah, I will. I, I, I do want to put a last plug in for the, the now named hardware update program. And that is that we are waiving any support charges up until your renewal period on either the virtual or now the physical appliance upgrades Very so cool. any any support dollars you spent with us to date are sufficient to cover these new additions to your system up until the time it is support renewal that's so good of you guys because we were decommissioning something and putting yep. something in there and it should have been a net and we had to fight you guys and deal with all the money in the background and you guys just came up with a nice program to make that a reality so thank you for that that was a hard one to to, to position with our customers that they had to pay more support for something that they've already paid support that they're decommissioning. So nice work. Thank you, Kurt. Happy to have made it happen. Absolutely. And thank you for helping drive it. All right, so on the next slide, uh, let, me, let me take Matt's cue here and talk not just about the latest release because it is the service pack on the release where we implemented TLS 1.2. So November last year, uh, TLS 1.2 support came in our 19.2 release. That is a big change for us, uh, long overdue. It affected most all the components with one exception, which I'll touch on in a second, uh, in the My Voice Connect system. So our physical and virtual voice switches the physical ST voice switches, most importantly, and the virtuals. Uh, obviously the HQ and DVS servers that are integral to every single system, the edge gateway, the mobility router, all of the different components that make up a My Voice Connect system and use HTTPS or SIP TLS now are up to the TLS 1.2 standards which means stronger, what are called cipher suites, so stronger encryption and stronger authentication combined. And it's just the right thing to be doing in this era when security is such a, a topic. Well, such a focus. Our VX gateway and the mobility router, we're already using it. And now you just extended it to every other product. All the way to the rest of the connections. Yep. And, and, you know, he kind of, he said it, but I'm gonna say it more bluntly with a ball peen hammer right on the forehead. You know, there are switches, hardware switches that do support TLS 1.2. The bad news is the older short tell, the ST switches, mm. not SG. Support. SG. SG. Bang. <laughs> S the older SGs don't support it. The newer STs do support it. Or Absolutely. With the pathways that we talked about, get rid of all the SGs and just go virtual in your TLS 1.2. There was... A gray area, Kurt, that you and I finally broke the code on, on the 200, M 200 series MGCP phones or the 655s, all the MGCP phones. Yep. And we thought there could be a workaround and we could get away from it. But if you truly need to be 100% TLS 1.2 compliant stamp of approval 
all MGCP phones need to be off your network as well. Is that a true statement? That ultimately is the right answer. Yes, indeed. Right. Okay. So um, in light of what's going on with security, we urge you guys to take this seriously and let's get you to TLS 1.2. I have several customers that this alone has spurred the conversation to go to cloud. And then because of that, go to cloud with Mitel or others, mostly Mitel, because it's a very clean upgrade to get to, to Mitel Connect Cloud, which Carthex is going to talk about a little later. More security. I see HTTPS. Yes. So while TLS 1.2 made the 19.2 release, uh, we still had some leftover use of open HTTP and FTP uh, that we now in this service pack that was just released on the 21st of June uh, also closed up. So we're using HTTPS with TLS 1.2, of course, um, now for all of those connections that previously had been unencrypted. So. But Director that, been applies, yeah. that applies, again, to the ST physical switches, but not the SGs. Yeah. Got it. There we go. That, there, there's the answer. Okay, cool. Yep. Now, the other big thing in, in 19.2 Service Pack 1 is the new version of the firmware used in the 6900 series phones. And this served both a purpose for Mitel and for our customers. For us, we now have a single stream of software that includes all of the My Voice Connect features with the other SIP requirements across the Mitel portfolio. When we got acquired, we ended up splitting off a branch on that SIP firmware unique to My Voice Connect. And so R&D, we're having to maintain two streams of software. Well, in 6.0, we brought that back together. So the SIP 6.0 firmware is now a single stream for us, but at the same time, we did bring some new features. And specifically, uh, those of you that uh, are using telephones to compose uh, voicemail, you can now compose, reply, and forward right on the phone. You don't have to just use the Connect Desktop client. 6900 series phones will do that the same way the 400 series did. Uh, we had some feedback on ease of use for switching availability states from available, out of the office, in a meeting, et cetera. There's now a, a single dial pad digit you can press to change those states. For those of you not familiar, Mitel Revolution is our mass notification product. Uh, if you've been with us for a long time, this is actually Synapse. So we're still working very closely with our friends at Synapse as we, has, as we have for decade plus. And we did some XML enhancements in the 6900 series phones that uh, specifically benefited that application. And then finally, the wireless LAN capability with the 6900 series phones, being able to have an adapter plug-in that uh, makes that phone move around the office there's actually an interface on the 6900 series phone itself now to configure that for our My Voice Connect customers. That uh, wasn't available in the earlier versions of the SIP firmware. All right, another good things in Service Pack 1. Uh, first off, of course, rolling up the patches that uh, we had done a few on 19.2, but more on our 19.1 release. And these largely had to do with everybody working from home in 2020. We had some areas in the Shortel slash Mitel software base leading up to the pandemic that had just not been exercised with soft phone use as much as it should have. And that has, that has been addressed. We're now able to say with confidence that we can support a couple thousand endpoints, still limited when they're remote to how many active phone calls can go through. But uh, at the end of the day, it is certainly now the case that all of those patches that some of you I'm sure have applied uh, are rolled up into the 19.2 Service Pack 1 release. Uh, some of the rest of the capabilities, we've talked about HTTPS there. Uh, 
let me see if I can I can dismiss the poll because unfortunately when the poll pops up for me I I lose there's my slide thank you I'm learning, I'm learning go to meeting it takes over it doesn't pop up it's no meeting it takes over everything <laughs> well but I was going to remember I was going to remember ESXi seven anyway but so VMware seven .0 is now officially supported as is Hyper-V 2019, uh, along with Exchange 2019. And there, there were a few more of our technical debt items uh, rolled up and addressed in this service pack. Uh, diagnostics and monitoring took a significant amount of uh, enhancement in this release, needed enhancement. Um, our voicemail and auto attendant HQ only, sometimes even on a DVS issues that some of you may have bumped into. Uh, we found and fixed a number of issues there. I'll plug a policy or a, a directive, a, a bulletin that we published, a, a, a knowledge article, suggesting moving those services off to the DVS servers as much as possible and also organizing your system with site separation even if you were physically in a single location uh, to that we absolutely are seeing a benefit to reduced issues with voicemail and auto attendant outages and as a result have made that additional site license and no charge item to simplify customers actually taking those steps that we're suggesting Hey, uh, I got a good one for you. There's a bunch of questions. This is a good one from our friend, uh, dear friend of ours. What about customers who have already took advantage of the Speedway program and paid the upfront prorated support? Will that be credit upon renewal? <laughs> I certainly, Matt, my guidance to you is reach out to Bill Matson when that customer's renewal time rolls around and see what he'll do for you. Yep. We'll get it. We'll get it done for sure. Great, great one. Okay, keep going. Oh, there's another one here. I'm gonna do a little cleanup real quick. One of them was so, somebody bought Shortel phones and now you're saying you've got the new Mitel phones. Listen, the Shortel phones are still supported. The 400 Absolutely. phones support TLS 1.2. They're SIP, they're not MGCP, they're supported. Quite frankly, I have phones that we sold in 2005 that are still working, the IP430, actually, it's not in the pull, it still works, it's just not supported. So um, the 400 series phone is not going anywhere. We can actually still buy them, you still got a couple thousand left, they're gonna go end of sale a couple months here until inventory runs out, and then you got about a little, little, for, little further out, the, the, the non-gig versions, yes. But yeah. you know, you, got, you gotta believe those phones are old enough that even the gigabit versions will reach that point sometime in the not too distant future. So it's just finding components that. to make older hardware is very difficult to do. That said, exactly. Mitel's not going to stop supporting them. So there's no need no. to buy new phones. The appliances just run out of horsepower and gas for the new code to support these new features. The phone itself, there's not a lot of processing of issue. on there. It's going to live through a lot of stuff unless it's MGCP and by nature that's not TLS 1.2 so you got to go to SIP and blah 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 blah. Yeah that your comment there just reminded me of of a data point that sticks in the back of my mind those SG voice switches that we've talked about not being able to support TLS 1.2 that hardware design was first laid down or began to be laid down by Shortel with components then available in terms of CPUs and memory uh, in 2003. Whoa! So they didn't they didn't reach mark they they didn't reach market for a couple of years till later. I was like 2005 or six, if memory serves, uh, from reading reading the history because I wasn't there. Uh, but nonetheless, very old architecture yeah. and most importantly horsepower uh, is the reason that we can't get those SG switches to run yeah. modern era software. Yeah. And you're. CFO has fully depreciated all those assets, I promise you. <laughs> all right, I'm go. sure every customer is well past, yes. All right, um, I, and I, I don't have all the, the CVE, the critical vulnerable, the, I forget the name of the acronym, N never mind. Anyway, 
there there are known vulnerabilities. There were a few left even um, in 19.2 that we also picked up in Service Pack 1. We now can say definitively, starting even with 19.2, um, there will be no critical vulnerabilities flagged on Nessus or any of the other scanners that you might be using against your My Voice Connect system. And we're going to continue to drive the high and the medium vulnerabilities out as well and keep going at the pace that we now have started with 19.2 release. So thumbs up on security. Um, one right. thing, not, Fire away. Uh, you know, something that got kind of taken away from the product line development and there's two, maybe three of on you on here that it affected you on who are part of this uh, is the V kind of a bummer, but I get it. Maybe you can talk about the, well, so we have a 90 V and a 50 V where voicemails and flash memory and automated attendance and other couple things inside of it still supported. Doesn't support TLS 1.2, obviously there was talks and there is the capacity in the existing short tell switches to add some software to make them V. So voicemail and flash memory within the short tell switches. And that was going along. Unfortunately, the funding for that project got pulled. And so there will never be voicemail in flash memory on the short tell line of equipment. So uh, just an update on that. So uh, yeah, I, just, just to be sure we're totally clear, you're absolutely right. But you said short tell line of equipment and it's actually the ST voice switches, yeah. my yes. tell, there were short tail branded STs also, yeah. but um, so correct. Unfortunately, we will not be bringing out a a voice switch based voicemail or auto attendant capability. And some other things that are not on here that maybe we can do some quick cleanup too is you know a little bit on the edge gateway. The edge gateway is what it is. We love the products. I can put remote 400 series phones or remote soft phones onto an edge gateway remotely without the need for third-party VPNs. It was limited to the number of sessions. I think it's like 2,000 or what's some, there's a limited to the number of actual sessions. 2,000's two, two, two registered, 200 active. Yeah, that's right. So 200 active trunks or sessions, if you will, for the 2,000 people that have registered. Didn't work for some of our larger customers, worked great for our SMB. You're now coming out with um, the edge gateway replacement for the 6900 series phones, that will be much, much bigger than that. And that's going through the in-gate, correct? Absolutely. So we've got the in-gate right. that I get much, much larger uh, number of transactions and simultaneous throughput back to your premise based short tell with the 6900 yeah. series phones back to the in-gate. And the failover option as well. Failover option too, awesome. I heard it, yep. you heard it here. What, what we're lacking there, and again, who's buying phones? There are people buying phones. It's insane to me in this day and age, but people still are buying phones. Most people are doing soft phones. That's 80% of our purchases, but 20% of our install base is buying phones is still a big number. My thing is I want the in-gate to support the Connect client, which is directionally on the roadmap when? Uh, still not present on the 12-month chart I'm about to show, but it certainly no. is something that we are absolutely strongly considering trying to get on that roadmap. It has to happen, right? I mean, you can't have phones on one and soft phones on the other, or you can't make your remote only on only on hard phones. It's gotta be soft phones. So they get it, they know it, it's gonna happen. We're fighting for it. Just, just timing, keep same, going. Same sort of issue, just a quick recap on history. Remember when we had a VPN concentrator for, H, for MGCP phones, and the edge gateway for the 400 series and the client, we ultimately do need to catch up absolutely and get to a single secure edge platform. And in-gate separator is where that's gonna start. In fact, there's another thing the separator can do that we'll get to as well here in a moment. And that's the call to teams bit, but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Um, Karthik, if you would toss the, the roadmap slide up and we'll we'll start with the big subject that may or may not be top of your minds, but is absolutely top of Mitel's mind. 
Um, and that's what we're doing in our 19.2 service pack two release that's in progress right now. And that's something called Ray Bombs Act, which is actually the, the legislation that drove this FCC regulation 19-76. I've got a slide on it in a moment. I'll get into more detail there. But fundamentally, quick top level view is this has to do with 911 calls and making sure that the dispatchable location, literally down to the corner of the building or even the cubicle or the hard wall office that the caller placed that 911 call from, needs to be transmitted so that the responders can get to that specific location. So more, more on that in a moment. Uh, I mentioned bringing the multi-cell decked portfolio out for my Voice Connect customers as it is already available on a number of our other UC platforms. We call that SIP decked. And then finally, closing off on our Hyper-V gaps, we almost got the secure boot certificate signed with Microsoft in time for Service Pack 1, but we didn't. So we're trying to make sure that is all wrapped up in this same Service Pack 2 timeframe. And that timeframe is we cannot get to market any later than October, which is the guidance we've given our R&D team. As a result, almost 100% of our resources are focused on this support for Ray Bombs Act, which again, I'll, I'll get into more detail on in a moment. Next up, after we get that release out the door, uh, we, we go hard on something that we've already had in the pipeline and significant work already completed. And that is what Matt just mentioned about the 6900 series teleworker, the remote 6900 series capability, where we will make that connection via the in-gate separator just makes sense. It's already the session border controller for the My Voice Connect base. Adding on top of that the remote phone capability, Matt, ultimately the remote client capability is, is absolutely the right thing to do for a variety of reasons. And we, and we touched on these a bit a moment ago. Uh, capacities. Uh, you, you can have, I forget, how many thousand active sessions on the largest separator and the virtual separator as opposed to hundreds as we have today on the edge gateway. So you've got much more scalability and most important for a lot of customers, uh, redundancy. The fact you can have two or more separators in pairwise failover mode. So you can have a primary and a secondary and you could have more than one pair of those even on a My Voice Connect system. So much more scalable, much more directionally correct way to go for the 6900 series phones. And we've had some great development, as I said, already in progress. It's just we have a hard time frame that you hear in a moment on Ray Bombs Act compliance, which is unfortunately caused the teleworker support to slip out. Closely tied to that is another hot topic for many, many customers. And that is while Microsoft have not cut off their original basic authentication, nor even announced a final date yet, we know it's imminent. And this is what I refer to as Azure AD support it goes by a variety of names. The, the underlying protocol is OAuth. So some people will use that term. Uh, Microsoft officially described this as modern authentication. And fundamentally, it's a, a more secure method of user authentication in a Microsoft system that we take full advantage of with My Voice Connect. Except today, we only support basic authentication. That work affects our desktop client and it affects our director application because we want to be able to secure authentication with director for the administrator, not just all the users. 
And that modern authentication work is also planned for this 19.3 release targeting the beginning of Q1 2022. And the modern auth, we promised some customers this year, ah, it slipped. But what I'm hearing you say last time that this, we're hoping for January for this 19.3. Absolutely. That is the goal. That's where I've got the, uh, the dotted arrow drawn. And <laughs> as soon as we get the Ray Bomb work off our R&D team's plate, we can get back to non-time constrained business. And those two pieces, and there's not the only two pieces, they're just the ones that to me were big enough to, to warrant inclusion on a roadmap slide. Uh, become the number one priorities for us. So with this fact, we, modern auth, OAuth, will we do single sign-in to Okta or, or other SAML providers? So we'll officially target getting Microsoft Azure AD working. Uh, it's not clear to me how close, if not all the way, we would be with others because of the protocol implementation. But at this point, we're only committing to the Microsoft Azure AD integration. Okay. And then finally, I, I do want to get on to Ray Baum because that's a big topic, and I'm also conscious of time. I need to leave Karthik a little room. Here yeah, let's to, go. Uh, Rex, as well. Rex, cool. We can't wait. We, we're not recording very well on SIP. Cool. So. Well, let's let's do two more minutes on Ray Baum, and then I'll yield the floor. All right. Next slide. Ray Baum and Carrie's Law. Um, Carrie's Law happened last year, February 16th, 2020. Um, you you got to notify someone inside the organization when a 911 call was placed. Uh, that actually is why we started giving away the emergency notification app, up to five alertees. And of course, Mitel Revolution for those customers who want a more sophisticated and uh, more capable notification product that does more than just comply with Carey's law, yeah? Similarly, also last year, uh, the first part of this FCC 1976 regulation took effect, which was for, not for fixed devices. Well, our definition of a fixed device is an analog phone. It's at the end of a hard piece of wire. It almost never moves. And certainly the, the, the port that it's connected to between the desk and the, the voice switch is hardwired, yeah? So that we're already covered on for this dispatchable location requirement. It involves configuring the, the CSID, the identifier that gets sent along with a 911 call when it's placed. But the new regulation for January 2022 affects all non-fixed devices. And an IP phone, by virtue of it working no matter what Ethernet port you plug it into in your building, uh, is a non-fixed device. More importantly, you've got other non-fixed devices like soft phones that are either perhaps roaming around within your building and using the, the Wi-Fi network, or as I certainly have been for over a year, and I bet most of you are as well, or were, uh, working from home. And so we need a way to make sure that if someone places a 911 call from those soft phones, that dispatchable location information is always provided. And, and, and the point here on this whole thing is we're all installed base here. The legal term is for any net new deployments that this has to be in here and done by. Um, so we're all safe for a bit for our install base, but it's going to be very important for us all to have a plan and get us all there. Yes, in fact, you, you, you took the words right out of my mouth, which I love. Uh, the law says any multi-line telephone system, which is what My Voice Connect and all the rest of the Mitel UC portfolio really are, um, that system, if it was deployed prior to February 16th, 2020, which was the Carey's Law effective date, um, 
you are not obligated today to be compliant with Ray Baum's Act or FCC 1976. So that immediately shrinks the exposure for probably most all of you on this call. But to Matt's point, uh, certainly a plan that you should be working towards, because if nothing else, this is a good thing to do, right? If you happen to be a florist or a restaurant or someone with a small single building location where there's no question that when the first responder hits the front door, they're in the right place. Not a problem. The big so issue is for more. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the big issue is when you're in a a, a multi-location company or a, a multi-story building, even uh, that's where this specific dispatchable location information is really important. All right, let's keep going. We got to get it to Carthac here eventually. Indeed. Nice. So that's that. That was my spiel on that one. My last two. Um, mentioned the in-gate separator doing more than just SIP trunking and soon 6900 series teleworker. Uh, we can support the call to teams application from a company called Cunify. Is our recommended in fact way for those partners who, customers who want to do Microsoft Teams integration with My Voice Connect to proceed. And we've got it working, I've got it working, we can show it to you, but fundamentally, you use your Teams client and you're trunking from your Connect premise system, SIP, PRI trunking. There's some SBCs and some cloud SBCs that have to happen to make everything work, but the good news is you don't have to go to Microsoft and buy a big dialing plan, you can use your existing Shortel infrastructure, Mitel infrastructure, for your trunking and have 20, 30, 40, 10, 5, 50 people on Teams, everybody else on Mitel, and everybody's happy. So contact us uh, to, to take a look at it and get some pricing. And I, it's in my most recent newsletter. Uh, one mistake on there we're fixing today. Mitel updated us two days ago. So we'll have some no change in pricing or the idea that just one part number changed. And then never Great, fail. Man. This is our replacement to... Uh, to Double take, go, Kurt. Uh, just a, a great new alternative. <clears throat> we absolutely are much happier with uh, what we've seen from the folks that never fail. And by the way, they were already a MyTel partner and being sold with our My Contact Center business application. So thrilled to be able to extend that offer out for our HQ or Windows DVS servers if uh, you're interested in making sure that they're never down for more than a minute or two. Uh, that's that's currently the window. We're, we're thinking we can tighten that a little bit more even with the additional work that Never Fail are undertaking to, to do a plug-in that's unique to My Voice Connect, makes, makes it even snappier than the, the current experience. But bottom line, uh, if you're concerned about resilience, absolutely uh, talk to Matt about Never Fail. All right, is, the, is, the, is it the quick poll still up? I should be, it should not be there. It's not. It just flashed for me momentarily. Okay, great, on mine it shows it's still there. Okay, with that, I've got one, one question for you. Mitel, I mean, um, uh, Microsoft security patches, what ah. is your on those? How often, what are we doing? Security is the utmost importance. Always been a troubling concept for us. One minute on that. So we have officially published, actually this has been a while now, um, officially published guidance that yes, you should absolutely apply the security patches that your business practice and policy suggest on your HQ and DV at Windows DVS servers. And only if we suspect anything you report as a problem by talking to Matt and then Matt talking to our attack was related to one of those patches, would we ever ask you to roll it back and determine whether or not that was why? Because remember, we, we only test everything available to us from Microsoft at the point we release the software. So we've got a bunch of questions. I'm gonna answer them all. We'll send them out with the recording. I will get that published document out to everybody too. 
Karthik, right. your patience. I All love right. the ability to move people to the cloud. Phones stay the same. Clients stay the same. In theory, your collaboration would stay the same. You move some IP addresses and we're live in the cloud. Like it's an amazing concept for us for a lot of our install base. I know there's, a lot, there's yeah. a lot to it. So go, Karthik. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, yeah, great stuff that Kurt talked about, right? A lot of things happening and uh, trying to get into most of your uh, capital that's already invested, but this is a great alternative, right? I wanted to give you a sense for what's happening in the market. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, if you look at the overall UCNC market, there's not a whole lot of growth in the overall market, but there's a lot of movement within the market, right? About 440 million uh, total seats, um, including cloud. But if you remove cloud and look at just the on-prem seats that are globally available, that's about 340 million. Every year, there's about 13% of it. You figure about seven to eight year refresh cycle for on-prem investments. 13% comes up for refresh. And what's happening is when it comes up for refresh, about 54% of them are choosing to go to cloud and the remaining are still cho uh, choosing to stay with on-prem. This is more exaggerated actually in, in uh, the Americas where cloud penetration is uh, a lot more mature than the rest of the world. It's about 65% choosing to go to cloud. But if you look at the global picture, that 54% means that there's 23 million seats every year going to cloud, right? That's just give, to give you context on what's happening in the overall marketplace. And some of the drivers that, that's, that's making people go to the cloud, you know, when you, when you need new capabilities and the existing on-prem system is not able to support that, uh, of course, we can support remote working capabilities with, uh, with My Voice Connect, but many of the other systems don't have those capabilities. And we saw during the pandemic that remote working had to be like, a, like an instantaneous thing. And, we saw a lot of remote working licenses getting uh, used and a lot of people going to cloud to have that quick ability to ramp up their remote working capabilities. That's a good example. And contact center, especially contact center when delivered from the cloud, those new capabilities are available with the newer systems and cloud systems. So those become trigger points, right? And uh, many companies are growing and they're acquiring other companies, merging with other companies, and whatever systems uh, they decide to go with, that causes a trigger point. That's another trigger point for them to choose which way they're going and cloud happens to be one of them. And as I said, businesses, when they grow, uh, not just when they're adding more employees and uh, adding capacity, but they're adding new sites, that becomes a trigger point as well. And when the, 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 the system goes uh, out of life or when it comes up for renewal, those are all, uh, again, trigger points. Just wanted to give you a sense for what, what are the drivers? What are the drivers for the consideration of, okay, should I stay with my own from system or should I consider going to cloud? This is what is happening uh, in the marketplace. And this is based on uh, the, the, the data, the numbers you see on the left side. It's, uh, it's a combination of uh, market research reports that we use as well as our own studies. And the drivers is basically we've gone out and uh, uh, talked to our customers, gotten a pulse on what drives their decisions, and that's what you're seeing here. Yeah. You know, uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to dwell on this slide. I think many of you are very familiar with uh, uh, the, the benefits of a cloud communication system uh, going from CapEx to OpEx and not needing a uh, cash outlay right up front, pay as you go. And there's a lot of flexibility in what profiles you pick. And there's, especially Mitel with Mitel, we provide a lot of flexibility in terms of uh, like, if you need 10 users on this profile, the remaining 80 of them in another profile, those type of things are all completely possible with, uh, with, with our cloud solution. And then there's no little to no maintenance, right? This is a big uh, uh, selling point for cloud where you're streamlining your IT operations and putting things on the cloud, therefore not having to maintain equipment on your uh, uh, facilities. Along with it comes the benefit of, you know, not having to deal with the hardware and the cooling and the power and those type of things. Um, you leave it to the uh, experts. 
and, and not just the experts, there's a lot of uh, scale, uh, economies of scale advantages too, and that's one of the key selling points, right? Uh, integrations have become easy, uh, not that integrations uh, are not happening with the on-prem system, but cloud-to-cloud -cloud integrations and the APIs and those type of things have gotten very, very advanced, and um, it is a lot easier, and the vendor does a lot of these integrations for you, so you can just pick and choose which integrations you want for your particular environment. And I talked about scalability as the business grows or shrinks in some cases, you're able to go up or down with uh, how many people you need to enable and pay only for what you're consuming as opposed to having committed to a certain level of uh, capacity with the on-prem system. So these are all some of the benefits that you would see with uh, uh, with a cloud system. Now, what, uh, you know, next, talking uh, about Go ahead. Yep. You're saying your next slide is the total cost of ownership, which, I mean, we can right. generally prove that it's going to be cheaper for you to have an uh, have a cloud-based system based on what you're doing today with all of your premise, with upgrades, with telco, with support, with people. We can generally prove that it's going to be more cost-effective to move everything to the cloud. Absolutely, absolutely. One of the most uh, popular questions that comes to us is, uh, hey, I'm just paying maintenance contract. You know, how come you want me to go to like a $25 per seat per month type of uh, uh, subscription with cloud? What people tend to miss is, uh, yeah, you paid the hardware CapEx uh, out, uh, upfront outlay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. But the, the recurring charges, it's not just the maintenance contract, right? Um, as Matt mentioned, there's there's your uh, telco cost, long distance uh, minutes cost, and your networking costs, um, and the personnel that you need to have to maintain these uh, uh, the, the, the on-prem equipment. And I mentioned uh, real estate and power and cooling. Those are when you put all of these together. That's where the scale economics make, makes a lot of sense with the cloud providers. And in most cases, you can see that um, and in, a, in a three to five year time frame, uh, it makes a ton more sense for you to go with the cloud system from a TCO standpoint. Now, um, <laughs> it, it, Michael's known for the on-prem systems. We've built a, a very strong business over the 45 years, but uh, there is a very, very strong cloud-based uh, uh, solution as well. Uh, and uh, the basis for this is uh, what we acquired from Shotel uh, several years ago. MyCloud Connect is our flagship uh, multi-tenanted retail cloud offering. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's built on uh, some of the uh, things that has made MyCloud uh, a very, very reliable vendor, uh, trusted vendor to partners as well as customers. Um, super reliable, and some of the things that we've done over the last couple of years, uh, there's been a lot of investment in re-architecting some of the things and making uh, sure that it's going, it's moving towards like a microservices architecture, particularly because we, we didn't want to deal with like a monolithic system where if one problem occurs, the entire uh, service is uh, impacted. We moved away from that type of an architecture. We invested a lot in going towards this microservices architecture where we can uh, isolate problems if they happen. And problems are going to happen with uh, uh, an operation of this scale. Uh, when problems occur, we can not only isolate them to that part of the system and thereby not impact the rest of the system, and we've implemented a lot of monitoring uh, hooks and alerts uh, so that we can very quickly get to the problem. And uh, that's where we've built in a lot of resiliency and self-healing capability so that the system comes back very, very quickly. So the, the uptime is phenomenal, and I've got a chart later on to show you. Uh, so from a reliability standpoint, uh, it, it's hard to beat Michael on that front. Flexibility, I talked about flexibility quite a bit, um, uh, not only in terms of like the profiles we offer and giving customers the flexibility to choose the right profiles for their uh, the employee base, depending on their use cases, we also have flexibility in terms of how we go to market. We've introduced uh, new partner-based models where partners like uh, uh, Matt and Packet Fusion have more of a role to play. It's not uh, just that it's a retail cloud, uh, Mitel or the cloud vendor takes over completely. No, that's not what it is. We actually value uh, uh, you know, working with partners and 
uh, like Packet Fusion, they, they know, Matt knows uh, all of your uh, uh, needs really, really well. And in many cases, uh, partners are local to the customer and can be very highly responsive. So we're creating models where partners can take more of an active role, uh, whether it's in the upfront uh, onboarding uh, process or in the ongoing management um, of the system, helping customers uh, you know, add new users, modify, make changes. These are all very, very key to us. Um, and we're, we are a partner-centric uh, uh, company. So you will see that come through in everything that we do. And simplicity, right? Uh, one, of the, one of the key things that we've done and, and uh, having the entire stack uh, developed in-house helps a lot in this sense. We, we've got our devices, we've got our own clients, we've got our infrastructure. Uh, all of this and uh, contact center also uh, being uh, uh, built in-house, these are all helping us tremendously to create a very, very unified, simple, consistent uh, customer experience. So that's a very, very key thing. And uh, we're constantly evolving on that front. One of the things that we are going to come up with is, uh, um, I mean, you're used to the Connect app, um, and we've introduced my team meetings for the video experience, for team collaboration, we have um, teamwork, um, and for contact center, have yet, yet another application. All of this is coming together into one unified experience, and we're pretty excited about this. We're going to be making an announcement very shortly here uh, within the next uh, several weeks. Uh, there's a new experience coming, and very, very key to this is bringing that contact center customer engagement capabilities into one unified experience. Our fundamental belief is that for you uh, to drive your business, customers are like lifeline for you and engaging with them. It has got to be integrated with your communications and collaboration solution. It doesn't have to be separate, right? And you have to be able to tap into your employee base uh, internally to, to improve the customer experience that you provide for your customers. And not only that, Employees within the company are, uh, are your customers too, in some sense. For IT, your employees are internal customers. For HR, your internal employees are your customers. We believe that some of the customer engagement capabilities apply to these scenarios as well. So we see the, the unified communications and collaborations uh, applications and experience as an integral part along with customer engagement. So, we are going to be making some announcements in the next few weeks on this, but watch out for this. Uh, there's going to be a new application experience coming out, uh, starting with Micro Connect, but then we'll start uh, rolling that out with the rest of the portfolio as well. Okay. So some exciting things coming. What does it mean for an on-prem customer from Mitel uh, in terms of considering cloud? Uh, why is Mitel the right choice? Right? Uh, because we know the on-prem systems really well, there are a lot of advantages that we can provide. Right? Starting with investment protection. Uh, uh, Matt kicked us off by talking about the phones. Right? You've invested in phones, whether that's for the 400 series or the more recent 6900 series. Those phones will readily work with MyCloud Connect as well. So investment protection is a key, key aspect for us. Um, and, and in cases where um, you don't have a phone uh, that is supported, we're happy to give you a free phone that works with Michael Connect and get you uh, set up that way. We're also working on tools that make the migration process easy. I mean, if you work with a completely new vendor, this can be a very painful process just to, in terms of you know, understanding how the current communication system is configured, how many users, how many different ways they are configured, um, what are the customizations that have been done. Um, we are automating all of that. Understanding uh, the system that you have, which we have we're very well do, we are automating a lot of that extraction of the configuration information and presenting it in an easy way to understand how this needs to be set up on the cloud side. That's something we're coming out with, and uh, that will be super, super useful for customers, especially so that you don't have to go through the pain of documenting everything that you've done in the past so that your new system is configured the way you want. We're going to be taking care of that. And there's a lot of incentives that we've created. Uh, uh, and Speedway is, uh, is an incentive program specifically designed for existing customers, right? Up to 40% discount on the profiles, and we offer a free phone 
and free activation. These are all some of the things that we've done, and we're constantly looking at what more can we do uh, to make that, uh, uh, that that migration process attractive for our existing customers. And last but not the least, the expertise that I talked about. Right? We 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 are migrating a lot of customers. We know what it takes. We know the pain points, what to avoid, what to look out for. These are all things that uh, we can bring to the table and make that migration very, very easy. And I want to leave uh, you all with the slide. I talked a lot about that uh, re-architecture and making sure it's a super reliable system. I mean, it's a communication and collaboration system. You want the system to be available when you're communicating with your customers, when you're communicating with uh, for on mission critical projects, right? So this is a, a, a stat that I wanted to share with you. Um, you know, if you look at the last 12 months, and this is based on a uh, public site, downdetector.com, and you can go look it up on, uh, you know, specific uh, uh, providers there, like Mitel or any of our competitors. And the red triangles show how many outages uh, these vendors have had over the last 12 months, right? This shows you a very, very clear picture of uh, all the effort that we've put into uh, our cloud service, my cloud connect, and making it a very, very reliable service for you, right? Two outages in the last 12 months compared to a number of outages with any of these other uh, providers that you can see out there, right? I just wanted to leave you with that. Uh, you know, Matt uh, said, uh, you know, uh, Mitel is one of the options as you consider cloud. I would say Mitel is probably the most reliable and best option for you, especially if you're an existing Mitel customer. Karthik, I love it. I totally agree. I love what you guys are doing. I love where you guys have come. You guys are all in GCP now, hyperscalers. You're using their worldwide delivery, their redundancy, their uptime, their scalability. It's it's unbelievable where you guys are come. Again, when you get to cloud, it's super simple. The phones move forward. The same client moves forward. You get some more features. You get all the benefits of just cloud in general. Pricing is very, very attractive. The integration for the, the 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 upgrade for us getting involved, knowing your integration, taking the database, moving the users, moving the some of the call flow, moving your announcements to the cloud super easily. Again, we can redesign the whole thing from scratch, or we can simply move what you have into the cloud, very cost right. effective, very super easily. But again, how I started this, um, we will keep your Shortel, Mitel, Pre Connect, premise based system alive and working and with the future for as long as you want and we're the right guys to do it for you. That said, eventually there's gonna be a time for you to get to cloud and we're the experts to get you there. And Mitel is an unbelievable solution and all the benefits I just talked about getting you to the cloud with Mitel are, are true. So uh, contact me, contact one of your sales reps, contact your client services, uh, let us help. All right guys, awesome work, Karthak. Kurt, thanks for your time. Thanks, Talk to you guys yep. soon. Thank you. It was a pleasure. All right, guys. Thanks, everyone. Yep. All right. Thanks, all. Appreciate the time. Bye-bye.